Anyone who has ever gotten into game development will be able to agree on two things. One, starting a new project is fun and exciting. And two, abandoning a project is easy and tempting. Abandonment can happen for a variety of reasons. Maybe you burn out or lose interest in your idea. Maybe you realize your game idea just isn't fun. Or sometimes you hit a brick wall in development. There are exceptions to this, of course, such as the developer of Dwarf Fortress, who's been working on their game for over 20 years now. But for most of us, we're faced with the reality of creation. Perseverance is hard. Hey everyone, my name is Fortune, and I'm working on a game that combines my favorite aspects from DayZ, Stalker, and Tarkov. And I just broke through one of the most challenging brick walls I've ever hit in game development. You may remember from one of my previous videos that I was creating an inventory system inspired by the game Escape from Tarkov. I ended up having to completely rework that inventory system, pretty much remaking it from the ground up. Twice. I'll get more into detail on the new one in a bit. And in my older inventory video, I detailed some of the things I wanted to achieve with the previous system, and for the most part I did. However, the foundation of it all was shaky. Things would break, new features were difficult to add, and it all came to a head when I wanted to add client-side prediction. That is, allowing the client to predict if the action you're trying to take will actually work. This would let the UI update instantly, regardless of what your internet connection is like. I figured that I'd just work on it later, and I kept putting it off. Every time I wanted to add a new feature, I'd see how it'd have to connect to the inventory system, and the complexity of it all just kept piling up and up and up. That's when the imposter syndrome starts to creep in. Am I really good enough? Do I know what I'm doing? I was doing all of the coding myself with pretty much no outside assistance, and I was really beginning to feel the pressure. You see, an inventory system in itself isn't actually that hard. Depending on what you need to do, I'd say they can actually be quite easy. However, in my case, rather than just having a static storage of items in it that the player always has on them, I wanted it to be dynamic. You store items in containers, such as a backpack or your armor or your pockets, and you can drop those kinds of things whenever you want. Items can be rotated and moved around Tetris style, it supports nested containers and storing backpacks and backpacks and backpacks. On top of all of this, it needs to be networked and synced between different players, which... Looking at all of that, that's just... that's a lot. That's a lot of features, and all of them are kind of tricky. I'd set myself a very difficult task to accomplish. As a programmer, I'm almost entirely self-taught. I began at around the age of 12, working in Gary's Mod, and... Actually, no. I started with Blitz Basic, this old-ass game-making tool, and I mean... Just look at this shit. On this. I'll turn the sound up, so you can see the still sound in the game. I don't know how my 12 year old dumbass self found this, or why this is what I started with, but man, it was awful. This is so far removed from modern game development, it's hilarious. It was first released in the year 2000. This software is as old as I am. Did I pick this up for a reason? Nope. I, to this day, cannot recall how the fuck I found this before something like Unity, which was definitely out at the time I started learning to program. Anyway, my point is I'm not a stranger to complex problems and difficult learning curves, but this, this one, I feel like I've been working on this problem forever. My first attempt at making an inventory system like this was over a year ago now. The second attempt was five months ago, and now I was looking at rewriting it again for the third time. My very first attempt at this system was really bad, and I mean it. I was brand new to Sandbox's UI system at the time, and I hate working with UI in general. Not only that, but the backend system was also pretty terrible. It didn't support multiple containers or backpacks or anything really. It couldn't equip items, and I very quickly realized it'd need a rewrite if I wanted to achieve what I wanted. It did support rotation though, and even though as a whole it was fatally flawed, I did learn a lot from it. My second attempt was much better, but still failed in a few critical areas. You could now equip and unequip items, and it also supported having different backpacks and nested containers, but the method I used for this was immature and difficult to network. Only individual inventories existed on the network, so any changes resulted in the entire thing needing to be re-serialized and updated on the client. What this means is, say, a backpack is the only actual real thing stored on the network. All the items in it are just considered part of that backpack rather than individual things that could be networked on their own. This meant it was very difficult to network small changes, such as stacks changing or moving an item around, and often led to the entire inventory needing to be networked again. 
obviously very inefficient in hindsight and I'm not really sure why I went with this when I started on it. The structure of it also made it nearly impossible to be predicted. The changes needed were way too difficult and would have been about as easy as just rewriting it from scratch. However, I was able to save the rotation system from my first iteration and it made it easy to implement in this one. So learning from that, I took what worked and scrapped the rest. And now we come to the current implementation, which once again, I wrote pretty much from the ground up taking everything I learned and improving on it. Small changes are easy to network. All items, containers, and inventories are networked now. All inventory actions are handled by a manager that is the same on both client and server. So actions can be predicted client side and the UI updated immediately. A very nice person on the Sandbox Discord offered to make some sound effects for me and I happily took them up on the offer. Now the UI has some lovely SFX when you move stuff around and equip things. It properly supports having bags and bags and bags and bags. And you can loot bodies and containers as well as pick items up off the ground and overall i'm just quite proud of it you can also drop items which i thought was going to be really easy to add but i ran into some uh complications <laughs> this is goofy uh, development bro i was somehow breaking the physics of the items when dropping them but instead of just crashing the game they started marching now seeing this bug i thought this was quite funny so i decided to record this and then they should be what 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 was that <laughs> I have not a single fucking clue what happened here, but it was one of the funniest bugs I've ever seen. Now, is the new system perfect? Nope. There's still a few things that could do with a little rewrite, but they're just portions of it rather than the whole thing now. It's at a point where I'm comfortable focusing my attention elsewhere. And if you're sitting there thinking, gosh, that UI looks kind of bad, well, yeah, yeah, I know. Okay, placeholder, early access, whatever. I'll fix it later. All right, I was busting my balls to get this shit working. All right, I'll fix Anyway, the point of all this is to say, rarely will game development be easy. In fact, it will often be quite hard, but almost never impossible. If you stick with something, no matter how daunting at first, you will be able to overcome it. Or at least you'll lower your standards until you do. The truly difficult thing is in choosing what you spend your time on. In my case, the inventory system is a truly core part of what I want the game to be. So I feel comfortable spending so long on it. If you're working on your own projects, give it some thought. Don't spend your time you don't have to on features you don't need. It's not obvious when you're starting out, and of course I still run into these issues myself. It's just part of game development. The inventory isn't the only thing I've been working on, however. Face Punch also made some pretty big changes to Sandbox in the meantime, which meant I had to fix all those bugs. Post processing got reworked, which broke a ton of stuff that I worked on in the last video, but that's mostly patched up now. Hitboxes also got a nice little rework, which broke every NPC again, so I had to go and fix all those. That was pretty fun. I'm pretty sure I'm starting to get PTSD when I open up Model Dog. Uh, I finally got around to adding leaning as well, which is a nice feature to have. Uh, not a lot to say about it, I guess. You, you can do the friendship wiggle from Tarkov, I suppose. Uh, I also added a first person body where I uh, borrowed the code from one of Face Punch's repositories. <laughs> Uh, that took a bit of tweaking, but I think it turned out pretty good. Uh, with all that done now, I'm back on track to making the actual game part of the game. Next video, I'm going to be working on a mini sort of battle royale game mode, I'm pretty sure I said that last time, so that I can thoroughly playtest the new inventory and combat systems. Sorry for the long delay between uploads, I promised myself this wasn't going to happen, but here we are. Support the channel, links in the description. Thanks, bye!